Your lead flow in Follow Up Boss is the main way that you distribute leads, assign a lender automatically, and or start an action plan automatically as new leads come in. So I'm here in the lead flow, owners um, and admins will have access to this. To find this, you go to admin lead flow, and this will basically show you all your lead sources. Uh, typically a lead flow is created for each new lead source. Often they are created separately for sellers and buyers, which is an important uh, way that you can route some leads differently. Um, but these are essentially automatically created. You can manually create them, but anytime you push leads into Follow Up Boss through the Follow Up Boss email, through API, or Zapier, any other way that you push a lead in here, you'll potentially have some control over the name. Sometimes the names are just created, like a Realtor.com or a Zillow um, or a Ylopo. Um, and very often, most of those sources are separate buyer and seller lead flow. So we've got a seller one down here. It also shows you a little bit of intel around how they did come in. Was this an API connection? Um, is it a certain user's email? It doesn't matter which user's email. Typically, uh, you would use your main follow up boss email that can be found um, under, I believe it's still under integrations. It's moved and I can't always find it. Oh, it's under AP. It's under API. So you have your follow up boss email here. There is one for each team member, but typically you can just use this one main one. In some sense, it doesn't matter which one you use as long as it's not a user that you would potentially delete. So again, admin API to find that follow up boss email address, a lot of email lead types or form types can be forwarded to that email to come in and create a new lead flow. So one of the great things you can do here is this distribution. And I highly recommend using Follow Up Boss groups to do this. Even if you're a solo agent um, or if you have a very small team, it's just much better to route your lead distribution through groups. And so those are found under admin groups. You can create as many as you like. There's a couple of other settings we're gonna go through a bit later, but um, creating these groups, again, even if there's only one person in it, can be a great way to kind of future-proof your Follow Up Boss. So I'm for now, I'm just gonna use this buyer leads as an example, that's kind of the easiest one. So if I go back to lead flow, you can see I have this distribution to the buyer leads group. And so what that means is anytime a lead comes in through this lead flow, it's gonna be routed to this group. And so if you've got an agent or if you add a new agent, you have somebody you wanna take off or uh, add to that lead rotation, you would just very easily do that here in one place and then the lead flow is always gonna follow those rules. So again, even if you're a solo user or a very small team, using these groups makes really good sense. You don't have to come in here and edit this lead flow, which you wanna do as little as possible. You simply edit the group to control who those leads go to. Lenders are assigned in a similar way. If you have a lead source like a Ylopo, where a lender is potentially you know, paying part of your spend, you can automatically assign only leads from that lead flow to a specific lender you can also use groups for lenders as well. So the other part of this is an action plan. And this is gonna be an auto apply action plan when a new lead comes in through this lead flow. So something cool you can do here is have different action plans for different sources. For certain things like a Zillow Flex or another live transfer service, you probably don't wanna have an action plan with an initial text or email because you've potentially been live transferred to them and they don't need to get an email that says, hey, when can we talk? So some different things you can do there, certainly applying tags and action plans, whether it's something like a Ylopo re remarketing tag, um, something where certain leads or some leads get a company lead tag, a lot of cool things you can do by routing to a specific action plan and tailoring that action plan to that source or your particular style of follow-up or processing these leads. So this again can be done for each of these lead flows differently. Um, really important to just look at these distributions. Another cool feature of the lead flow is it shows you when the last lead came through on that source, so or on this lead flow. So another great way, if you're testing these, you can actually click on the per last lead that came through that flow and that can give you a little intel to come in here and look at, okay, what happened? Where did they, you know, did they get the right action plan? 
they in a deal or some custom field intel here? Like what's going on with this particular flow? So you can kind of tweak and, and figure those things out. Another important feature here are these advanced settings. So you can click on advanced settings to do a number of things for each lead flow, whether it's routing differently by a tag, sending a different action plan by a tag. Back to the Zillow example, when Zillow connects you live, they typically apply a Zillow connected tag. I believe there's another one that I can't think of right now, but um, if you wanted to say, hey, if it's a live transfer from Zillow, add the tag Zillow connected and then send them a different action plan or again, send them that plan that does not have an initial text that says, hey, nice, you know, when can we grab a call? So a lot of cool things you can do here, again, individual groups or agent distribution, as well as assigned lender. So if you're representing a community and you have a tag pushed in for that, you can say only send leads for that community to this person. You can get pretty deep with these. I don't recommend making them super, super complicated, but you can uh, additionally route by price, by city or state, zip code, MLS numbers. If uh, for some reason a particular uh, MLS number needs to the leads need to go to a specific agent. Uh, you could do that, uh, or even whether they do or do not have a phone number, because you might want to apply a different action plan if, say, they don't have a phone number, uh, maybe replying, asking them, hey, is there a good number we can connect on? So a lot of great things you can do here. Another cool thing is if you're using these across multiple sources, you can get them set up here, and you can actually copy to or from other lead flows. So if you have some complicated rules, that apply to multiple sources or lead flows, you can actually copy these rules into another lead flow without having to recreate them. So when you do that, be sure to hit save and you'll be brought back to this main lead flow screen. So I'll hop into groups more now. Again, admin groups, you can create, modify, um, or delete these here. Um, it shows you a number of things. Obviously be sure to name it well. Typically these names are seen uh, at some point in the lead flow. So be sure that you name it uh, something that multiple people in your account could potentially see. Distribution type, we're gonna come back to in a second. Um, and again, this shows you who is on it. And if they're in round robin, there's gonna be a green circle showing you who is next to receive a lead because round robin's gonna go one agent, then the next, then the next, then the next for each lead or each lead flow that comes through. So you can click here to edit that, add people to it. Again, we're going to come back to that in a minute. And then it also shows you what type, because you can have lender groups. Um, that is a differentiation that you can see here as well. And if you have an existing um, group that you want to modify, you just hit edit. You can edit the name. Uh, you cannot edit the type after it has been created. Um, if you have a lot of agents, you can easily just search here to find certain ones. Um, and then just determine what agent should be on this particular group you're routing to. The two main ways of distribution, or the two ways of distribution, are round robin, which is gonna to go to one agent, then the next, then the next, for each new lead that comes in. This can be a great way to do things, especially if you know your agents are gonna be quick in contacting these leads. This can be a good way to kind of even out or make the distribution a little more fair. Um, first to claim is also a really great feature. Um, this is gonna ping all of your agents in this group at the same time, it's through the Follow Boss app. So be sure you have the Follow Boss mobile app set up and your notifications set appropriately. You can additionally hide the name of the contact or the source of the contact. So if you don't want your agents to cherry pick sources, um, say, hey, I'm only gonna grab this particular lead type, you can um, turn this on as it says here to hide or show the lead source in the notification to claim the lead. Then there's additional settings around how long you wanna leave that lead available for those agents that have been notified. Um, you can also set a fallback. So if no one claims it in 30 minutes, I wanna do this. I wanna send it to an ISA or I wanna send it to a pond, um, which I wouldn't recommend for a new lead coming in. Um, but there's a number of things you can do here as far as, uh, as well as a specific person. So if there's somebody on the team that should be notified when no one claims a lead, you can assign that lead to them here. Bear in mind, the assignment does power things like action plans. Um, so you're gonna be mindful of that when you set this up. You can technically officially route to another group 
you can also route to the same group, but I want to mention a caveat there. It will reroute twice. Some people say, hey, I want my agents to get notified again if they don't claim it in, say, 15 minutes. You can technically select your fallback as the same group. So in this case, it's the buyer leads group. One big word of caution, though, if you do this, it will run twice, and then the automatic fallback will be the owner of the follow-up boss account. This will not run ad nauseum. It'll run twice through and then just assign to the owner. So sometimes that can be confusing for people, uh, but you don't want to create a feedback loop forever on that. One other good kind of advanced best practice is you could, ass you could assign this fallback as a different first to claim group and that would continue on. But again, you may want to have that first to claim group then route to a user because you want to get these leads assigned to a user pretty quickly. Uh, you don't want them floating around in um, space for 15 minutes over and over and over again. So some cool things you can do here, but um, you know, maybe try some different things and see what works best for your setup. But once you've got that, you're going to hit save changes. And now you can see this has changed to first to claim as the type. And there's no green circle because both agents here will be notified of a new lead. They'll have to click through that notification to claim the lead. And of course, that lead comes in automatically assigned to them. Any action plan would fire at that time. So it would at least come from the agent that claimed the lead. So really, really great feature to use groups for more and more of your routing and lead flow. Uh, it just keeps things simple. One last caveat I'll mention, some sources like Zillow Flex or Homelight, uh, so things like that, lead flow can be a little confusing. Some of them either create a new lead flow for each user. And so if you see Zillow, buyers, one of your specific agent's names, you may need to distribute those leads specifically to that agent. An example would be a brokerage where someone pays for their own Zillow leads. You can set up here that their particular lead flow with their name in it routes specifically to that agent. Um, and then another good use of that would be um, things like Ylopo and some other sources, the Zillow now two-way sync also does this. It pushes through one lead flow, but the API actually assigns the lead. So if a lead is assigned in Zillow to someone, it may push through your general Zillow Flex lead flow. You're not going to want to edit the distribution on that because it's going to automatically via API assign it to the appropriate person. So just be mindful of that. Um, you don't want to route someone's very specific lead flow to a group um, or someone um, that shouldn't be receiving those leads. But just wanted to mention that. But a really great feature here. would encourage you to take a look at your setup and see if this would be useful for you.